Today we're going to build and test a smoke element that will make a smoke trail behind a rocket long after the fuel is depleted, allowing you to visually track the rocket all the way to Apogee and beyond. Hello and welcome to Rotary Rocketry. So what is a smoke element? Well basically it's a slow burning product that provides a lot of smoke. The smoke element that we're going to be building today is part of a much bigger project. In the next couple of weeks I'm going to be building a really large motor and the smoke element is just one portion of that motor. The motor I'm going to be building is a design by Dan Paulino. If you haven't seen the video I did with Dan a couple of weeks ago there's a link down in the description. Check that video out after this one. Now built into Dan's motor design is a smoke element and the smoke element has always worked well for Dan but I wanted to build one outside of the motor and test it before we build one for inside the motor for two reasons. Number one, I just want to see how well it burns. I want to see the burn time as well as how much smoke it produces. And number two, we're going to be making a little change to the mixture that we're going to use to make the smoke element so we need to test to be sure that works. The smoke element is made from two simple products epoxy and potassium nitrate. Now when Dan was making his smoke elements, he used a brand of epoxy called West System Epoxy. It's a well-known brand, but it's also a little bit pricey. So I did a bunch of research to find out about epoxies, and I found a competitive product by a company called Total Boat. Now the reason I went with Total Boat, it's about 35% cheaper than West System, but it's also very similar. Both products are a 5 to 1 mixture ratio where you mix 5 parts resin with 1 part hardener and both are designed for marine applications. So I think they're very similar and I hope that they react the same in this particular experiment. But before we mix up the epoxy, we need to prepare our potassium nitrate. Now I already buy the potassium nitrate in a powdered form, but it's kind of a rough powder, kind of like table salt or white sugar. And for making rocket motors, that works just fine. But for this particular experiment, we're going to need something a little bit finer. So I'm going to use my coffee grinder here to grind up some of the potassium nitrate into a very fine powder, much more like flour. So I don't know exactly how much potassium nitrate we're going to need until we mix up the resin and the hardener and we can find out how much that weighs. We're going to need 65% potassium nitrate and 35% epoxy. Now, according to Dan's documentation, we're probably going to need somewhere between 80 to 90 grams of potassium nitrate. But just to be sure, I'm going to grind up about 150 grams so we have more than enough to work with. Now, this does such a good job at making it into a fine powder that when I remove the lid here, you'll probably even see some of it poof into the air. It's really a super fine powder. I'll continue doing that until I've got all this ground up. All right, so this is all of it. Now I put it on this pan on some foil and spread it out because we're gonna be putting this in the oven at 300 degrees for 30 minutes. Now the reason we're doing that is because potassium nitrate is hygroscopic, which means it can absorb moisture from the air. And we don't want any excessive moisture in the potassium nitrate. So putting it in the oven for 300 degrees for 30 minutes will drive out any moisture that's in here. And now we're ready to mix everything up. Now when this smoke element product gets poured into the motor I'm going to be building, it gets poured into a piece of 2 inch PVC pipe. So that's what I've got here is a little piece of 2 inch PVC pipe. I've just sealed the bottom up with some duct tape so we have a little area where we can pour the smoke element product into. Alright, so I'm going to use two pumps of the resin and then two pumps of the hardener. I'm going to weigh that so we can calculate exactly how much of the potassium nitrate we need to add to that. So it's 63.1 grams and we know the plastic container weighs 16.6 grams so we'll subtract that. So we have 46 and a half grams of epoxy. We'll divide that by 35 and then multiply that by 65. We come out with 86 grams that we need of potassium nitrate. I'll quickly measure off 86 grams of potassium nitrate and we'll mix that in with the epoxy. Now because we're using the slow hardener 
we have about 20 minutes of working time with this epoxy. If you use the fast drying hardener, you only have about 10 minutes of working time. All right, I've been mixing this for a couple of minutes. It's thoroughly mixed. And we'll just pour it all into our PVC mold. All right, now we wait. This takes about four days to completely set up. So a few seconds for you, but four days for me. Oh, okay, so it's been four days. Now, I know I probably could have tested this sooner. After about 24 hours, it was rock solid. But I did read somewhere that it can take up to four days for that epoxy to fully cure, and I just wanted to give it that chance to be fully hardened before testing it. Now, when this is in the rocket motor, the heat of the fuel ignites the epoxy. Now, since we don't have that here, we need to simulate that type of heat. So I've got a piece of rocket fuel left over from a previous project. I'm going to crush this, melt it down, and pour it over the epoxy. That should provide the heat that we need to ignite the epoxy, and we're ready for a ground test. Smoke element test in three, two. Before we do that, now would be a great time to talk about safety. When you're burning unusual things like epoxy or plastics, you need to understand that the fumes put off by that burning process might be toxic, which means they can be very harmful to people. So if you're doing a burn test like this, make sure you're in a very big open area, far away from other people, and also make sure that wherever you're standing, you're positioned so that the wind won't blow those fumes back in your direction. Back to the test. Three, two, one. So that initial big burst of white smoke was the fuel burning off the top, and then it reduced down to this lesser smoke, but it's also burning pretty aggressively. We'll let that burn and see how long it goes for. So it's pretty much died down. I'm just gonna go put it out with some water. Wow, there is not much left here. About half of the PVC was completely consumed, but it does look like the epoxy was completely consumed as well, so it stayed burning until it was gone. So that's great. I'm gonna go back to the shop and take a look at the footage, and then we'll talk about the results. All right, so I watched the close-up video, and it looks like the epoxy portion burned for about 70 seconds, which was way longer than I expected, but it was fantastic. There was a lot of flame there, too, which I really didn't expect. So we blew through a whole bunch of the PVC. About a half of it's gone. Now, you may think, well, if this is in the rocket motor, you're just going to blow through the PVC casing and light the rocket on fire. Well, in the design of the motor for this, there's actually two layers of PVC where this is located. There's the PVC pipe that contains the epoxy, and then there's a PVC coupling that's glued on over that. And that's supposed to prevent the burn through. Now the next project I'm gonna be working on is building the motor that contains that smoke element. And it's a really big one. And if that goes well, I'm gonna to need to build a large rocket to hold that motor as well. So we've got some great content coming up. If you're not subscribed to the channel, now would be a great time to hit that subscribe button. Don't miss out on any of our future videos. And if you're still watching the video and you haven't clicked that like button, now's a great time to do it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.